Hey there, welcome back to the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. It's Eva here today and we are going to look at block instances. Ever since the last tutorial with Akio um, about the halo ring, I've been looking at doing a little introduction into block instances because they are so useful. So today what we're going to do is we're going to create a jewelry block instance and uh, if you look up on the right of my interface you'll see I have got Grasshopper Gold installed on my system and in typical plugin or jewelry plugin you usually have a, a um, an you have an option to create a stone in whatever shape you want and uh, these tools are really handy but what if you didn't have a plugin and you had to create everything yourself? So you see this is uh, the Grasshopper Gold interface. You've got an assortment of different stone shapes. And uh, what we're going to do is create a round, brilliant cut. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to make a very rudimentary stone. I'm just going to create the silhouette of a diamond. I'm going to use a circle with a diameter of 1.3 millimeters. That's a one pointer or a 0 0.01 carat diamond. Uh, it's a pretty common size when you're using smalls. That's going to be my template for the size. And I'm going to use my polyline tool to create just the silhouette of a typical brilliant cut stone. So I'm not going to go into too much detail with the way the stone looks. I just want the silhouette. That's good enough. So, and let's check here. There's a little trick I want to show you with the revolve tool. So I'm just going to start by drawing my table and then my girdle and use the 1.3 millimeter diameter circle as my guide. And there's my, my seat. Now I'm going to fetch my revolve tool and I'm going to use our profile curve. So the curve to revolve is our profile curve. I'm going to enter zero as my axis for my revolve. And the start and end of my axis is 360 degrees. And there we go. You have the shape of a round cut diamond. Now you'll see the stone is not closed. Uh, well, a little trick I wanted to show you with the revolve tool, namely, if we take our curve, our profile curve, if you move the points beyond the axis that you revolved on, you see here it automatically shuts the object, closes it without overlapping. This is great, which means you don't have to uh, worry if you are not working perfectly on an axis, uh, it will do the job for you. I'm just going to move my table down a bit. Uh, that looks better. So the second thing we're going to do is create the cutter. And this is going to be rather simple because I'm just going to use a silhouette of my stone to create that and go back to my curves layer and fetch polyline again and this time I'm going to start higher up you may have seen the cutter tools already from other plugins so this is just kind of a standard shape uh, I'm following the silhouette of the stone, but just slightly off of where the stone ends, just so that I have a bit of leeway between the material it would cut and where the stone actually is located. You could do this with an offset curve as well. Um, I just did it by eye, but the offset curve, work, curve tool would work fine too. You just have to add a couple of extra lines to your offset curve. Um, this is a perfect cutting tool if you just want to cut the seat of the stone, but if we wanted to cut through the material below the stone, we would actually add, like I'm doing now, an extra cylinder shape. This would cut through the material below the stone as well. So I'm going to use the trim tool to trim those two curves 
and then we're just going to join them. And now we do a revolve, same as with the stone silhouette. Revolve, zero is our starting axis in the y direction, or z direction, sorry, and 360. Oopie. Oh, it's open at the bottom. Okay, I did not join those two curves. Just going to go back and join those two. And nope, the history didn't do it automatically. I'll just do a revolve. And there we go. Okay. Now, the last thing are our prongs. So, the prongs are fairly simple. It's just a cylinder uh, for 1.3 millimeter stone, a cylinder of around about 0.4 millimeters, roughly below 3.5, below 0.35 is too small, but uh, 0.45 is good, or 0.4. And the height of our prong could be approximately the height of our stone, it needs to drop below the stone into the material and for the sake of the casting uh, and for there to be enough material for the setter you want the prong to be a bit higher than the stone. I'm just going to relocate my gumball and do a 45 degree rotation of the stone over the prong around the stone and now we're going to fetch the polar array tool Ah, oh, wait, fillet that edge first. And the last thing to do is a polo array around the stone, the four prongs. And here we go. Let's move that out just a little bit so that it's not entirely on the stone. And there's your block instance. Well, there is the template for your block instance. So, what we do next is we are going to save this as a normal Rhino file. I'm just going to save this to my desktop. I'm going to call this a one pointer. Going to call this one pointer diamond round. Okay, so I have my reference, save that, and now we're going to open a new file. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to open another file that I've already prepared with a very basic ring shank. We're going to make a eternity ring, and now that we have this ring ready we want to place our block instances on this ring in order to create an eternity ring and then head on over to file insert this is going to open a block instance dialog box and search for our file let's go to the desktop get one pointer diamond round where is it where is it there we go open and yes we want to embed and link going ahead over to linked that way any changes I make outside of the file on the original block instance will be uh, changing automatically in my file and press OK and put in the description this is my one pointer now we also want to head on over to our insertion point scale and rotation and put those on prompt that way we can scale and rotate our block instance we're not limited to the size that it's at. And here we go. There's the block instance. So I want to plop him over on my on my ring, on my outside surface. I'm just going to click on the point there, quite point, scale it up, scale it to half the size. That way I know it will fill the shank. And then I have the option to rotate. And move that over 
onto the inside and center. And that's it. Simple as that. The next thing we're wanting to do is um, two things. We need to build a bright cut and we need to polo array this block instance. So the bright cut I'm going to do by using the original profile curve of this ring. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste it on the top half of the ring shank. And I'm going to scale it down using the points. Let me fetch the points at the bottom. I'm using my ghosted view, viewport mode so I can see into my ring. I'm going to move those bottom four points up and I'm going to scale them inwards. There we go. Move them down a little bit. And I'm just going to switch off the prongs and the cutter so I can see what this bright cut profile will look like. I'd like to delete those outside points. Now the ring is also a bit too narrow so we're going to fatten up the sides and just broaden the ring. I'm going to do that very simply by relying on my rhino history and widening the profile curve. Widening all four views I'm just going to select my profile curve and at the same time as I scale the profile curve sideways I'm going to look in my right viewport to see that I have the right broadness and there you have it. It's about 0.3 millimeters. And that'll work. Now we're going to do another sweep rail like I initially did for the ring. And I'm going to use my circumference, ring circumference curve as my rail and the bright cut curve as my profile curve. So just fetch sweep rail. my bright cut curve move that seam on into the middle it's okay and boolean difference this channel out of the original ring okay just delete that and i've got a nice cut a nice bright cut inside there inside that shank Happy with that. So now we're going to polo array our, bri our block instance and zero is our point, our reference point. And uh, having a look here, let's have a look how many stones we've got. We can still add some more stones so we can go, go to items in our command line and change those items from 40 to, let's try 45, mm, maybe more, 40. Eight. Oh no, no, that now they're overlapping. No, the 45 was good. 44, finally, that's a good number. 44, it's a nice even number. Okay, great. And enter. So now we could cut the, 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 the cutter tools, uh, use the cutter tools and boolean difference them out. Um, Effectively, the string is finished, but I'm not happy with these prongs. I would prefer to have two prongs per stone instead of four. So I'm going to go back to uh, my original block instance layout, and I'm going to delete two of my prongs, and I'm going to scale up the prongs I have left. Just delete the two on the side. This is a, a two-prong setting, two-prong pave setting. And I'm going to save this and I'm going to go back to my ring. And there you go. Now we have two prongs per stone. And all I did was change the original block instance. Likewise, maybe I don't want round stones here. You know what? This 
is actually perfect for channel set. Maybe we should try and change these stones into princess cuts instead of round brilliant cuts. See how that will look. So save this, go back to my block instance again. And this time around, I'm going to delete my prongs. I don't need them anymore. Uh, delete the cutter and delete the stone. And we are going to rebuild that stone with the same silhouette. But this time we are going to have a square. We're going to, to add a, a square curve from our top view. I'm going to build it from the center out. So just select center and I'm going to make it 1.3 by 1.3 like I did with the circle. Oop. Nope, I double entered that 1.3 there. So okay, there we go. And now we're going to use rail revolve instead of revolve. So this time around, I'm just going to select rail revolve. I'm going to select my profile curve and I'm going to select the rail curve, which is my square. Go to my zero uh, point on my axis and there I have a <clears throat> princess cut stone. And we do the same with the cutters. And because we don't need the prongs, uh, we just need the stone and the cutters because uh, with the channel set, um, you don't have prongs. That's even simpler. And there we go. Okay, now we're ready. Let's save this. Go back to our ring. And wow, there we go. Channel cut eternity ring. This it's not necessary for you to change the original block instance. You can also insert a number of block instances and just replace them within your file too. Um, what I find useful is if I've made mistakes on my block instances, I can always go back and, and alter them. And if I have worked with a, a linked file, it, it will save me a lot of time, a lot of hassle. So this a lot of things. This is, this is a, a multitude of ways you can work with the block instances that can make your workflow more efficient and more versatile. And I um, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let's just go and bullion these, bullion these cutters out. Okay, so there's another thing. Block instances are by essence grouped objects. So if I select my, 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 my cutting tools now, and I want to boolean difference them out of my shank, it's not going to work. It's going to select both my stone and the cutter. It's going to select the whole unit. So what I first need to do is I need to release my block instance, so explode it. And the easiest way to do that is, is to either head on over to your block instance uh, window dialog box or just simply press the explode, explode command tool and let's have a look in our block manager. If I had to select my block instances and delete it, um, you will see my block instance will still remain, or at least the original objects will still remain in my document because um, I exploded the block instance already. So let's do a boolean difference. And our ring is ready. I'm very happy with that. It's a nice, fine little channel cut, channel set um, diamond ring. Now, I'm not entirely happy with the holes on the inside of the ring. I find that those holes were too small and not letting enough light through. So what I'm going to do is go back to my original block instance and just alter the bottom of the block, of the, the, the cutter block, and um, reopen the file and re, redo the Boolean difference. I 
hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and that you will be able to do a lot of great designs with it. Have a great day and remember to hit that like button and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.